Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Tuesday, August 25th. These are the charts of the day. Well, I consider this a pretty nasty day on Wall Street. The markets ran up sharply, really sharply, rolled over in the last couple hours and just got slam dunked right to the close at the low. Not a good way to finish, and the futures are lower, but they are bouncing a little bit. So it's going to be a volatile market, no question, and a lot of uh, indecision market-wise. I do want to show you some longs, but I'm going to go over some of the current boxing shorts and swing shorts. For starters, ACI has been really phenomenal in the midst of all this decline. Having gone from literally $1 on August the 5th, 20 days later, to 469 That's a, you know, 369% increase in the last three weeks. It's really amazing when you look at it. Um, now, what I'm going to show you is that yesterday, the day before yesterday, it reached 460 Today, it reached 469 And going back here in June, you'll see highs up around 490 480, 90, and even as high as 570 and 90. So I think if it gets up to this double top around 460, uh, uh, 69 area, we could see it move up towards five and a half, three quarters. But you've got to be careful in here. This stock is in a lousy market. It's had a big gain. You're going to see profit taking. Today was an inside day near resistance. That's actually good. Vine and technicals have still maintained their posture. The moving areas are crossing over. The ideal scenario is it pulls back, gives us a buy around three, three and a quarter. May not happen. I'm looking for a punch through, provided we get any kind of decent market. We'll see. Keep an eye on this one. Could be a good day trade scalp. Has been for the last few days. AQXP. Well, I put a swing trade on today after it exploded and pulled back and had this beautiful wedge. Take a look how this stock has held a 15 and a half area. 15, uh, 35.50. And then today it popped across here. And this is what got me interested. And it went across 23.27. The market was flying. And then it turned down. This stock, after reaching 24.50, go all the way back towards the um, 18 and a half, three quarter range and close there. So, unfortunately, not a good close on it and not the best timing on a swing trade. But I do think, though, as long as it holds this area at around the 15, 15 the quarter level, I'll be okay with it. But today may be an indication of that the beginning of the move. We'll see if volume picks up and it gets to 24, four and a half area. Keep an eye on this one. It could be powerful if and when we get the market moving. BBY exploded today with a big breakaway gap, having closed down here yesterday at about uh, 29 a quarter. Today got up to 34, 36. And then the market brought it back down, but it still managed to close off 368 or 12.5% on a lousy day of 21 million. So uh, perhaps this turnaround, this pullback could be a buying opportunity. The targets short term would be a, a test at a double top around 35 and change. You get through that, 37 and a half. Well, the golds got whacked, and dust is no exception in terms of the upside. That, that's the ETF for um, a triple bear ETF for gold. Now, after double bottoming and exploding from 12 all the way up to 40, or near there, 39-ish, double top, it came down into the uh, two days ago to late 1867, only to rebound sharply in the midst of this declining market. There's resistance up here. Keep an eye on the 30 range. If it gets through that, we could see 33, and then 37.8 again. But... We just may just as well get a pullback consolidation. In any case, strong surge back up towards resistance. If it punches through, we keep an eye on that one. That means gold is getting whacked. The other gold in the list is JDST, similar pattern. This one, though, had a deeper retrace before the snapback, also to resistance around the uh, $12 area. If it gets through, my targets are 15 and a half and 17. EFOI did, is continuing to do very well. If you take a look at this pattern, after the big pop recently to resistance, it's pulled back very nicely. Now, yesterday was a nice reversal day, and today was a slightly higher day, but it was a dollar too higher on 6.5%. In this market, you got to look at that as strong relative strength. Could this be going to 22, 25? I think so. Keep an eye on this one. It could be a good swing trade. ERY exploded today. That's the um, triple bear energy. And it just went the ballistic after dropping sharply in the morning at 33 to close at 39.80, some reversal. Now up against resistance, going way back. You can see that if we get through here, we got a lot of room to run towards 50. Looking at the SPXU and the UVXY, big day for the UVXY. Not only, um, not only did it spike up off the low, look at this reversal getting down to 42.68 and getting up to 66.90. Well, guess what? In after hours, it closed at the high for the day going away. In after hours, it's 68.99. 
up another couple points there. 73 is your next target. If we get through 73, three and a half, we could be in the 80s. But be careful, it's extremely volatile. It's also extremely short term overbought, having gone from 25 to 73 and change, nearly tripling in less than a week. And the SPXU also, a breakout of a base pattern, a long term downtrend, through a lot of resistance levels. If this market wants to keep going down, we could see this at 50 and then 55. That's the long side of it. Let's go with some shorts and see what's cooking on that side. Starting off with Caterpillar. Last week we talked about the fact that this wedge, had, uh, last month we talked about wedge had broken, came down and, re and failed to get through resistance at the price and moving average resistance here, and then got whacked, bear flag, and got whacked again. If this continues lower, we could see 68 short term. That's my short term target. Maybe even as low as 64. CEB got crushed. That's a box of swing short out of that falling, out of that rising wedge, I should say, to resistance. And from that level in the high 70s down to uh, the low yesterday at 68.90. Today it ran back up to 70, um, one and three quarter, no, 74.91 actually. 71.94, excuse me. And then pulled back down again to close with a penny lower on the day. The support is 67 if it gets through there, 63.4. Another box of short CMPR breaking down, snapped back this morning, was all the way up to 69.99 and closed at 66.90, down 19 cents after being up a couple three points. Looks lower to me, $60 target. Railroads are getting completely wiped. You can see this beautiful bear wedge at resistance here. And from that point at 165, it's rolled over to one uh, today's low 129 and change. So the shorts are coming to fruition. The other railroads in this group are KSU, completely crushed out of that bear wedge, looking for a move down the low 80s. And Union Pacific, same pattern, spiked down below the channel. May even be forming some sort of new channel in here, but it's also near the bottom of that channel. So at this point, even though it could go lower, my target's a mid 70s. If we get down in that mid 70s range, I would cover. Creato, a new box of short recently. Well, what a beautiful move this had. It's getting slammed from 48 down to 28 in a few days. The snapback was tremendous, and today it didn't do too badly, actually, less than 1%, but it's stalling at resistance, and if it fails, we could see a pullback of 50% or more. Deckers broke that entire base of the last six months and is now in following mode. We targeted at 56 and 51. Mallinckrodt, another box of short working. We take a look at the spike down and bear coil, or bear wedge, I should say. What a move down. In, in 90, it went from 100 to 78 in just five or six sessions, straight down. A little over, oversold short term, but if this continues, we could see even as low as 70. Skyworks. Well, anybody who saw this bear wedge and saw the collapse all the way down to 70 and didn't cover, I don't know what the problem is, but... It went from 90 to 70 in a week and then bounced sharply. Now, you can see that today's high at 86.65 puts it 16 points off the low, and it may well consolidate and make higher highs. I'd be really careful on this one. It's already had a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave decline. Teradata, still falling apart. This bear coil blade right there, or bear wedge, just pull it, bear flag. See it? Broke today, down another $1.29 to 48%. Looks like it's headed for 25.6 range. Tupperware, that beautiful bear flag gave us an inclination that this was headed much lower. It's dropped from 60 to 48 in a flash. And that's it for tonight, folks. It's ugly out there. I do want to point out that the McClellan Oscillator, the T2106, closed after running all the way back up in that rally this morning to minus 107. It got back down to close at minus. It says 236, 76. But I have a different reading at the one minute chart of 248.23. So closing at the low for the day going away, pretty nasty, folks. The next target would be somewhere down around the 300 range. Let's see if we can get there tomorrow morning. That would be a good setup for lower levels. And here's something else T2108, which is the percentage of stocks below that 40 day moving average.
closed at 608. Unbelievable. Look at these numbers. The last time I saw a reading like that was 2008. So folks, we're at historical precedence here. There's a low here, a low there, and a low there, all around the same or slightly higher than where we were today. Only two times in the last 17, 18 years have we seen this much lower. To Literally to the 2008 lower, everything was down. When 1% uh, of stocks were above their 40. And here, we're at less than half a percent or above. That's amazing. So anyway, we're at oversold conditions on a T2108. Near oversold on the Klan Oscillator. We are oversold, but we're near severely oversold. Keep your powder dry. Let's talk tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Good night.